In this video, we are going from this to this. It's very easy to do. You can do this at home, so stay tuned. Hey, how's it going? So, this has been my backdrop for maybe a couple of months uh, or a bit longer and I'm not very proud of it. The thing is that I'm in my garage and I am in the process of rebuilding this garage into a full-blown YouTube studio but it's just taking too long time. It's taking longer than I expected. I have a carpenter friend of mine who was supposed to help me out but he's very busy so in the meanwhile I was thinking instead of having this kind of sad backdrop I was thinking okay I've got this old green screen lying about so uh, let's make it into a virtual YouTube studio instead. Now you might have a similar situation that you have a spare bedroom or a garage rich like me but you don't really want to either spend the money on rebuilding it into a YouTube studio so get yourself a green screen and you're good to go. Now I do recommend using a paper background instead of a um, like these kind of fabrics that you have because they get creases all the time and uh, it's just not going to work as easily as paper. Before we put the green screen down we are using today a iFootage key light with a huge softbox attached to it also from iFootage and I'm using a small uh, pocket LED light uh, from Xion M40 Fibray as a kind of a fill light but let's start making this into a virtual set instead. So these kind of backdrops you can get from all the kind of places that sells photography, video equipment. It's not very expensive. I have just attached it to my wall, but you can get stands for it as well. I think that you can get a, a stand for about $100 and the backdrop as well is gonna set you back about $100 as well. But relatively speaking, it is not too expensive. Now I haven't lit this, um, this green screen as obviously we need to do. I tried some different kind of methods to light it as you would usually do like from the sides so that the green screen is evenly lit but I found that I've got this huge LED panel I mean this is a monster this is from uh, GVM and it's an RGB light as well so instead of just putting it on uh, normal daylight or possibly um, well whatever light as it's a RGB light you can also put green so I was thinking how is that gonna look like check this out I mean, my whole room looks like it's green. Oh, I'm looking at myself on the monitor in case you're checking out the B camera. And you're probably gonna also see this microphone. That is uh, what I usually use. But as I'm walking around in this video, I have attached a lab mic. If you're interested, uh, all the equipment that I'm using, I'm gonna put links to in the description. Now we have set up this uh, green, nice background. I mean, you don't have to have a huge, expensive LED panel like that one. If you have a RGB light, like the Sakoni light that I have reviewed, you can use Use that one as well but remove the cone from it so that it doesn't become a spotlight but it uh, lights the room more evenly. Let's have a look at where I actually found the image that I'm going to use in the backdrop for this video. Cotton in the mouth. Bubbly. So the image I found it on Motion Array because they just added images and graphic files as well, like for Photoshop and Illustrator, I believe. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna check that out. Since this background is not gonna be my final one, I'm not gonna put like, oh, this is a nice background. It looks like you're in the living room. I'm gonna go all the way and it's gonna look over the top, but I kind of like it. I found this kind of futuristic looking living room and I thought eh, that looks kind of cool. So I'm gonna use that one. Let's put it behind me and see what happens. So this is how you would maybe light it up if you're starting out. 
and it looks okay, but there are levels that you have to add to make it look even better. I did flip the image around because I have my key light over here and that was kind of replicating the light shining through that window. In this image that I have used, you can see that there is like a quite strong orange light coming from this side of the image. I have set up here a uh, couple of pocket RGB lights and you might see it over there in the B camera, but if we switch on this orange light, you can already see on my uh, mouse and uh, desk here that I have some orange spill from the RGB. That looks like it might come from that light in the image. You can see it here. Now, you can also see up there, there are some teal light. Let's do the same. Let's switch on another pocket RGB light. And that kind of replicates that light uh, in the ceiling. Now, to separate me a little bit more from the background, I found that I need to have a rim light or a hair light. So I just attached this little um, light tube. I have a fluorescent light up there, but of course that color is wrong. So since this is magnetic, I found that I can just click it on, click it on, attach it. And you can now see that I have this shine that uh, could replicate a little bit the light from the living room, now uh, the living room window, uh, but it also just looks a little bit more professional. So this is the footage before it's color graded. I have maybe changed the curves a bit. I have blurred out the background a little bit, so it looks a little bit more realistic. And on top of both layers, both myself and the background layer, I have put one of my cinematic LUTs so that I blend in a little bit better in that scene. And to add the little extra spice on top of everything, since I don't have time to use fusion or after effects or stuff like that, I just created this kind of fake light wrap. You can see it on my shoulder over here, maybe a little bit on this one as well. It just makes it look a little bit more realistic. So to finish up, if you want to make your green screen, your virtual sets look more realistic, add a couple of RGB lights in your scene because that is gonna separate you from the amateurs with the professionals, just like I did with only those two lights over there. It makes the whole difference in a green screen setup. To remove the green screen, uh, that's a whole video for itself. You can remove green screen or chroma in general using uh, Final Cut Pro, Premiere Pro, DaVinci as I'm using. The process is very similar. If you are not using green screen in your setup, uh, check out this video right here where I have multiple scenarios where you can light your YouTube videos in your living room or bedroom or wherever you are filming. Check it out. Peace.